Mon bro. Chwe diam ponyame. Mon bro. Nana is so JB. Mon bro. AJ! One bro. Nana is sick. One bro. AJ! One bro. Nana did sua. One bro.
this was before the plague descended upon our city, before the long winter months brought a darkness from which we would struggle to awake. In this story, life came to me not once, not twice, but three times to offer me a choice. Each time I chose, I get ahead of myself. Watch out for the carriages when you leave. They have gotten reckless. I saw one smash a young girl's leg just last week. If this is a difficult land to navigate, do not let anyone tell you any difference. Ma, I Mahabaka. <laughs> you are home late. Problems at the gin shop. <sighs> Everything fine. They tried to give me half price, my gym. They say I had bought an extra. Those silly men. I let them talk. I did not say a word. Then I packed up each bottle to move to the next shop. They hear it. They had to beg me to come back. They should know you by now. They think I put some magical African potion in it. I even added a fathom to the price. Ah, thanks to you, those men will continue to be drunk in the streets. Bless them. Or cast out in alleys into the arms of women. May they forget their sorrows. You are home early. Perhaps the spring light has brought some kindness to the bosses of the tanner. Our boy. Asleep after he eats. Uh -huh. So, just the two of us. Just <laughs> us. <laughs> An evening in London. Yeah. May I send you a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Save that for your customers. May I take you out for a walk by the river? With pleasure. Uh -huh. We will pretend we are back home. I will take you to my father's village. We will see whether he approves of you. Now, let me see. A woman who makes gin. I will give him a taste. Perhaps he would think differently. Mm, a woman who works in a hatter's factory. You would not know what a factory is. Ah, a woman dressed in the clothes of foreigners. What would you have me wear? <laughs> <laughs> he may not understand. A woman who has a strong back to work the land. I do not see any farms here. A woman who gets a good price for the fish you catch. No fish, but you know how to bag it. A woman who has given you a healthy boy. Yes. Good. Then he will accept me. Mm. And when we are done, we will go for a walk by the river. Mm. Imagine the rushes and listen to the music of the frogs. I will protect you from these crocodiles. Yeah? Yes, even these British ones. <laughs> that they would live in this filthy brown water. That they would live in this city. Give the British a scare. Therefore, do you ever think of going back? Abaka, we are just learning this place. During the days as I am stripping the hides, I often think of back home. I think of our village, my mother's pounded yam, the smell after a long hard rain. Your memory plays tricks on you. Night time, stars as far as you can see, as if our village were the only place that mattered. Abaka, the fumes at the tannery have twisted your thoughts. Our quiet village, women pounding yam. Have you forgotten how our village is now cost through by Dutch and British traders? Do you not remember how life back home is now ruled by what they might buy, sell, steal from us? Gold, men, women, children. And here, is it any different? I do not yet know, Abaka. Hmm. Land not fit for humans. Yes. But look, what they have built. A city with buildings taller than the tallest tree we ever knew. We now have money for food. Hmm. Have you heard? They are building a railway up north. A railway. Like a carriage that glides on steel rails. And the factories? We get it, right? My back aches from lifting their heights. My hands are scarred and stained by their chemicals. It may be better for our son. You want him to live here in a place that has enslaved us around the world? There is talk. It may end soon. You have gone to the meeting. Yes. But you should hear them speak. Former slaves, Africans who talk with eloquence and learning. It will come to pass. You are a dreamer. What else do we have? Our lives, our traditions. We will always have that. And now we have a new land. 
spread out before us. Mm. May you keep dreaming. You will see, Abata. You will see. Mr. Forrester. Good morning, Mr. Carter. You will do the honors of presenting today. It would be a privilege, sir. You have helped out with the procedure. We need young men like you to bring our work forward. Yes, sir. Good morning, fellow surgeons. Welcome to the lecture on this, the 23rd of February, 1831. Today, Mr. Forrester will present. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Surgeons in training. The case of Mr. William Bynum, patient admitted to hospital on the 8th of February, 1831. He presented with a large swelling of the leg and was diagnosed with a popliteal aneurysm. 15th of February, surgery performed. An incision was made by Mr. Carter and the offending artery tied off just below the kneecap and the fluid drained. The patient's leg was then wrapped by the dressings to prevent further bleeding. 22nd of February, daily follow-up given to patient. One week post-surgery, the fluid buildup was minimal and the circulation returned as normal to the leg. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. As you know, these are preliminary results, but it does appear the patient is on his way to a recovery. Well, I examined the patient again this morning, and he has regained full use of his limb. What we've given him is nothing short of a cure. We will monitor his progress. Well, if you will permit me, sir. With this surgery, we have advanced beyond the limitations of amputations and have now begun to influence the internal workings of the body. News of the operation has spread as far as Boston, Philadelphia... These are just rumours. <laughs> We will review the case again in a week and report back. You are ambitious, Mr. Forrester. <laughs> Only inspired by the work that we've done. We are innovators. The young always believe they know. But have you heard reports from abroad? The first cases of cholera have been reported in Hamburg. I'm still a long way from our doorstep. Well, it has been tracked from India, across Russia, and now to Europe. We know very little. Officers from the British Army have been dispatched. They will monitor the situation and devise a way to ensure that it is contained before it reaches our shores. But what if it cannot be contained, Mr. Carter? What if it spreads on the wind or in the bowels of the vessels that will dock in our ports? It may only be a matter of weeks before it reaches us. Mr. Forrester, we will not entertain such theories in this house of myths. My future fellow surgeons, you will hear stories of many strange and new diseases over the course of your work here, and you must learn not to be swayed by these tales of malaise. We have developed a practice based on science and observation, not rumour and speculation. We have built a strong foundation based on the toil of those who came before. Any further questions? Mr. Forrest? No, sir. 